In this video, we'll deal with these two pronoun issues here in Discourse 1-3. Okay, if we look here, okay, Israel. So this sentence is saying, Each day Goliath came to Israel's army and shouted to Israel's soldiers. So Israel is repeated twice. Uh, let's look at our, our pronoun identification rule. Okay, here we've said this has to be the subject. And that's, that's too restrictive. This Israel is not the subject. It's in a destination, which is an oblique too. But that's, then it's embedded in another noun phrase inside this oblique noun phrase. So let's remove that restriction that this is the subject. Now these rules, okay, these pronoun identification rules are executed after the phrase structure rules have been executed. So here, order is important. So even though this no longer has to be the subject, we still have uh, two noun phrases in a sequence, and this noun phrase has to come somewhere in the sentence after this noun phrase. Uh, this is noun phrase relativized equals no. Okay, so let's try this. Okay, that solved this problem. Okay, and now we have Okay, now we have more problems, more pronoun problems here. Okay, him, he, and his, they. Okay. Him, he. Okay, when I double click here, TPTA is high highlighting Goliath. It tries to find the noun down here in the analysis. It can't always find it exactly. It's actually sort of difficult, but it gets close. So it's actually here. So him, he. Okay, so here's a pronoun being modified by a noun phrase that's pre-head genitive. So, and this is a, a personal pronoun. When, a, when one of these noun phrases modifies a pronoun, we need to delete this noun phrase. So let's modify this rule. And I don't know exactly where in, in this, this noun phrase, this new noun phrase should be embedded, but we'll put it here for now. And we'll try it and see how it works. So all of these are optional, but they will be deleted when they modify a personal pronoun or a possessive pronoun or a relative pronoun. So let's try that. OK, much better. He and they became terrified. So when we have two pronouns, in a sequence like this, okay, he and they. Okay, these are both subjects, he and they. We want to combine these into a single pronoun, a, a plural pronoun, a single plural pronoun. So let's write a new rule that will combine conjoined pronouns. Let's build the input structure. Okay, and as I said, these are both subjects. Let's start by specifying that these are subjects. If, there, if one is a subject and one is an object or some other grammatical relation, we don't want to join them. So we'll say subject. And these are both personal pronouns. Okay, when we have the situation, let's go a, a little bit further. We'll specify this is the first. And this is the last subject. Last subject. When we have the situation, let's delete this one. But we need to change this one to a plural pronoun. We don't want... We don't want he. If we just deleted and they, we'd say he became terrified. So let's change this one to a plural pronoun.
Okay. Okay, good. Generate text is identical. Let's save it. Now at this point, we've made some pretty significant changes to our grammar. So we really need to go back and generate all the way from nouns 1-1 one, one to discourse 1-3. And I'll time lapse this. Okay, so we have two sentences that have issues. Should be Mary named this baby John, and Mary read the book that John has. Okay, let's go look at this one. Okay, let's let's deal with this data grid adjustment rule. Okay, the verb to name takes both a patient and a state. And uh, we can tag this as unnecessary. But you may remember in the previous video, we put a state noun phrase into the clause phrase structure rule right there. So Mary named the baby John. In our analysis system, for the verb to name, there's always a patient and there's also a state. So we want the state noun phrase to come after the object for this one particular verb. And these two never occur together except for this particular verb. So that should fix this problem. Okay. And by the way, you can regenerate it here as well. Okay. Regenerated text is identical to the saved text. So let's remove this one. Okay, Mary read the book that John had. Mary read the book that John has. Let's go look at this one. Okay, target tense and form is passed. This is because uh, initially this verb was discourse. And a video or two ago, we copied a rule from our grammar library that says when main verb's time is discourse and subordinate clauses and subordinate clauses verb is present, set subordinate tense to discourse. So that's why this is changing. Um, uh, features change from time equals present to discourse by complex concept insertion rule, common transfer rules copied from the library. Rule 11, that's this one. Rule 11, uh, etc. So, So this is actually the proper translation. When Mary read that, Mary read the book that John had that is the proper translation, so I'm going to save it. It will be different from our Word document, and I won't change the Word document because previous videos, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll want this to be has. So anyway, this is the proper translation. So that's all the issues, and we're now ready to move to Discourse 1-4.